Okay, hello artists. Today you are going to uh, be making monsters inspired by the uh, graphic designer and illustrator, the mind behind the Daily Monster animation series, Stephen Boucher. He was born in Germany in 1973 and we are going to watch a couple of his videos and this is the process that you're going to be using today during art class. You need a straw, a pen, some Sharpies, both thick and thin, and liquid watercolor. The liquid watercolor, you just need a little bit. You're going to hold your finger over the end of the straw as you put the straw into the watercolor so you have just a little bit, just a tiny, tiny bit of this watercolor paint here, and you are going to dribble it onto your paper. You can use your straw to push it around. Make sure that you're using only one end of your straw to push the watercolor around because on the other end of your straw you are going to put your mouth on this end now and you are going to blow through this to make an ink blot like this. You can drag your straw through it as well to dramatize sections of your ink blot. And anywhere that you have a puddle, just blow that out. If you have any significant puddles at the end, you can take a paper towel and you can blot them. You're going to want anywhere that you're drawing in a minute to be relatively dry. When you're done with your straw, please throw it away in the garbage can. And next, you're going to need your pen. Take a good look at your ink blot and start to think about what kind of a creature this ink blot could be. Look at the shapes that are available inside of it and think about are there parts of it that look like it could become eyes or horns or tendrils or tentacles, teeth, antennas, and have a look at it and start to see. This, these two little triangles here are starting to feel a little bit like eyes to me. So I'm going to start in here with my pen and maybe make some concentric circles. Stéphane Boucher does a lot of these concentric circle eyes and often they stay around and he fills in around them to have the space around them be completely dark. If you want to, you can go in and do that with your Sharpie, just like this, to increase the density of color and give your creature sort of a head that those eyes are planted into. Next, you can go right back to your pen and you can start to look for other places. This is feeling like some sort of a long nose or proboscis here. And um, this feels like maybe some part of a snout that maybe is going to have some teeth. And I can start to draw those teeth into it. You'll notice that Stéphane Boucher does a little bit of this hatching kind of little parallel lines to show shadow. And it feels to me like this could be a creature that has a forked tongue. I'm not quite sure what kind of a creature this is exactly, but it does seem like it could have that tongue. And I'm gonna include some more teeth down here that are a little bit sharp. And it looks like this creature is maybe yelling. And I wonder what color its tongue could be. It doesn't have to be a conventional real color. I think I'm gonna use this dark yellow Sharpie. And start to look for some places where you could add other things to it. If you like, for example, these little loops on the back, could your creature, could you continue those and your creature could have some spikes down the back, like this. And maybe these turn into some feet. There's a lot of visual weight up here it feels heavy up here, and it feels like my composition's really pulling toward the right. So I might want to try to balance a composition like that out with something heavy, visually heavy, at the bottom to really anchor this creature. In this case, I think he's going to have some big feet to visually anchor him. And I'm going to give him kind of wobbly feet and some striped socks. And you could look to those feet and think about, are they shoes? Are they inclusive of his toenails? Are they bare feet? I think mine's going to maybe be shoes. 
Do some simple X's for laces. Go in with some color. Add details like stripes to the socks. And this is where you get to really go with your imagination because your starting picture is not going to look anything like exactly what your neighbor is starting with. So you are never going to end up with exactly the same picture that your neighbor ends up with because yours is gonna be unique and all your own. And what does this creature eat? Where does this creature live? What kind of things does this creature do? You can think about that and give your creature a setting if you want to. You can give your creature uh, a setting that's on earth or in space. You could include um, creatures in it that you think this creature could be friends with or things that it might eat or other creatures it might eat. Maybe in this case, I'm going to include some sort of a small fly that my creature was just about to get with that long tongue reaching for it. Okay, so um, use your imagination. You've got the entire art time to work on this today. You're going to watch a couple of Stefan Boucher's um, animations, uh, anima his videos where he brings his little creatures to life. Enjoy, have fun, use your imagination.